there are certain things that, that, that I work with minority guys on. I'm in the minority now. We work with, there are a lot of things that we get done on a bipartisan basis. Mm -hmm. But journalism, the old adage about if a dog bites a man, that is not a story. Right. If a man bites the dog, now nah, you got a story. Right. Well, part, <laughs> bipartisan things getting done in Congress is not a story. Right. Uh, who cares? So no one talks about it. They don't. Now, to be honest, uh, uh, the things we disagree on are some of the most important things going on, right? Right, right. And so you'd expect the coverage to be there. But we do get a lot of things done, uh, but none of, the, none of the big ticket, none of the stuff that, that moves the needle, quite frankly, do you typically get done uh, in a bipartisan manner, except the uh, 2018 Farm Bill. It went through the House. The version that well, was, let's talk about the farm. Bill. Okay, so we'll let's skip ahead. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're gaining gaining momentum with your career in the House, and 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 you were appointed the uh, chairman of the Ag Commission yep. Committee, 2015, the House Ag Committee, which is a very prestigious thing, because every it's a powerful House Ag Committee. Every right. red part of Texas, or red red part of America, is impacted Affected by that. That's right. Rural but America. also food stamps, SAP, right. is is, yeah. is impacted by that. As is all the food distribution and H E B. Everyone else. Sure. I mean, uh, the Coke guys, uh, everything, everything's inf impacted by that. When you, and I'm, I'm sorry this is a long question, but I, but I, I, I covered this quite extensively, and, and I was in, really intrigued by the way you were doing this. When you first came out with your first, your first I guess, pitch for the, for the Ag Bill, you said, hey, we're going we're gonna to toughen some of the work rules for SNAP recipients. Yep. If, you know, uh, we're going to increase the number of minimum hours a week you got to work. To we're just going to enforce it. Yeah. We left it at 20. We yeah. were going to enforce it. But everyone poo-pooed on it. Yep. I mean, even Republicans. So it wasn't that much more draconian, but all you had to do was just tell people who are low-information inform voters that, hey, they're going to take away your food stamps, that and it was done. Yep. So how do you do, do, describe your strategy for getting, <laughs> getting this thing through? I had, a, I had an incredible team uh, led by... Uh, Matt Schertz and, and Bart Fisher and, and several other folks that, uh, uh, that arguably were the best Farm Bill uh, staffer team ever mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and making that happen. Uh, I was committed. You know, I, I, I said that we're going to get it done in uh, 18. We, we laid the, prep the, tried to prep the battlefield, so to speak. So mm -hmm. uh, 15 and 16, we had all the hearings, over 100 hearings in the committee, subcommittee on, the, on various aspects of the bill. Mm -hmm. 2017, we did all the listing sessions. We did one of them here in August, yeah, that's, which that's, was a blowout that's success. When, that's when the, uh, the, all, the, all the hemp uh, growers showed up. They did. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and so, uh, but had a great success there prepping the battlefield. So then in 18, I said, all right, we're going to, because it expired in 18. Right. And I was driven to get it done before it expired. That rarely mm -hmm. happens in D.C. We normally have to extend all this other kind of stuff. And I was like CPA completion complex kind of thing. Right. And so I start saying, we're getting this done in 2018. Well, everybody was very cordial and they kind of roll their eyes and Oh sure, okay. Go get them kind of way. You're the guy, and this kind of stuff. So they're saying you're going, you're going to put more restriction. You're going to make it harder to <laughs> yeah. stay on food stamps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so, explain the food stamp stats, like at that time. Yes, yeah, so at the poor time we had. Uh, this is 2018. Economy was great. Uh, unemployment rates uh, nationwide were under five percent, mm -hmm. and in many places they were in the in the way into the full employment category. Because most economists would argue that there is a a constant layer of unemployed, no matter how good the economy is, because right. people changing jobs, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, in California, at that point in time, uh, there was, up until September, every county in California had waived the work requirements for able-bodied adults under 50 with no dependents. Think about right. that description. Mm -hmm. Able-bodied, no dependents. no dependents, under 50, mm -hmm. older than 18. Mm -hmm. If you were in that category, so that's the core of your workforce. <laughs> and if you're in um, that category, current law still today says that you can only be on food stamps three months out of 36. Okay. We want you to go to work. Mm -hmm. We don't want a moral hazard of you living off the off the dole in that regard. There is in there an appropriate waiver that says if you live in a high unemployment area and there's just no jobs, then we will work with you so that you can stay on food stamps even though you're not working 20 hours a week or training for 20 hours a week. That waiver process had been abused in the extreme. The entire state of California was under a waiver. Not one able-bodied adult under 50, no dependents, had to work to stay on food stamps in, as you have in California. 
And, that and, was and but of course, Russia. they were all. I mean, California, with few exceptions, is mostly Democrat elected offices. Right. So and they're helping. They, out, they're they helping been out their able to take pockets of high unemployment and spread them around, spread them out, so that it covered a broader scoop of folks. And so we're simply saying, look, the current law says you work 20 hours a week or train 20 hours a week. Uh, we're going to just make that the requirement, and you're going to have to live by that. We're going to tighten that waiver rule up so that where it's really needed, still available. And uh, and it, so if you're um, disabled, if you've got dependents, if you're under mm -hmm. 18. Now, we did want to move the age to, to 59. Right. And over 60, you're unaffected by this, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that, well, the Democrats did a great job of trotting out the, the uh, disabled, trotting out the fam families with kids and dependents, trotting out old people. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't who we went at. We, they were not changed at all mm -hmm. in this deal. In fact, they were actually helped because in the food stamp law is an asset test. Right. The value of your home, the car, the value of your uh, assets, uh, if it's above a certain level, then you're, you're not eligible for food stamps. Mm -hmm. That number hadn't been changed since 1978. So what we did is we just simply inflation adjusted that number to nineteen to two thousand eighteen. So if you are, you if you're living in a house that's that's uh, I guess worth greater than seven or eight thousand dollars, you were probably being penalized on. Well, your it wasn't the house, but if you had a car, I there was you. more than that. Um, a car board fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, couldn't have any cash. I mean, it was just and, yeah. and so um, it, the asset test was hard to comply with, right? Right. Kicked, it, it kept people off of food stamps. It probably should have been on it, but that wasn't being enforced either. So we wanted to raise the the asset test up to a rational number. We also put in that the first $2,000 of cash didn't count against your food stamp asset test mm -hmm. because every family should have a safety net of some sort and, right. and penalizing folks who don't have a lot of resources anyway didn't make a lot of sense. So we tried to uh, adjust that mm -hmm. so that that wouldn't happen, wouldn't, wouldn't, hap wouldn't, uh, wouldn't cause a deal. But now when it finally went to court, went to Congress to get voted, it got voted down. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, so I take it into conference, into committee, mm -hmm. introduce a committee, uh, the Democrats hated it right. because they don't want to change food stamps at all uh, other than increase the benefits and or uh, decrease requirements. Mm -hmm. And so they hated it. Uh, not, one rep not one Democrat voted for it. Okay. Now, the other thing they didn't do is they didn't offer one amendment either. Right. They didn't have, they, they didn't have a better idea. No, absolutely right. not. Okay. And so I get to the floor. It passes 213 to 11. Okay. Pretty thin event, right. right? But I got it across the floor. Now, again, not one Democrat voted for it, but I got 213 out of the 230 plus Republicans that we had. Did you have to go walk the halls and go shake a lot of hands? Or Yeah, I mean, we're, we're working it hard. To, and, you know, we've had a coalition, had a, a whip team uh -huh. uh, that was just for that farm mm -hmm. bill. And they're out there banging on people, trying to get them uh, to make that happen. We really only lost Republicans who wanted it even stronger or stricter, right? And so most Republicans understood the value. Now, by doing that, it would have harvested money out of food stamps that would not have been spent. Well, that's, you know, to, to have cut food spent spending like that was too easy a, an argument for the Dems to make why not to do it. So what I proposed is let's take that uh, $8 billion that we would not spend on food stamps because of able-bodied adults. Let's use that money for the job training programs run by the states, not run by the federal government. Mm -hmm. by so you're, the going to, you're going to block grant the states money? They to, would get the money to mm -hmm. take and, and do, you know, because each state uh, has a different population of unemployed. Right. And, and the reasons why, why you're unemployed here is different. Mm -hmm. In San Angelo, it's different than why you might be unemployed in mm -hmm. Dearborn, Michigan or whatever. But it will allow the state's discretion how to address their population. And, uh, and my Democrat colleagues suddenly became uninterested in funding work work uh, study programs and, uh, and job training programs, <laughs> it was or, or even money going back to their their work their work right. estimations. That's right. That's yeah. right. That, they, they, no, no, we don't like that. In fact, the Colin Peterson, the, the ranking member at the time, said it won't work. It'll fail. You just can't do that. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to do that. And you know, every every work percent right. program, every work program out there, the Democrats so have you, always you, said is underfunded. You pass the House, it goes to the Senate. Uh, the Senate passes their version. Okay. So, so now you have two. You have two different side types. That's right. A standard and, deal. We've got did to go you to ever talk to the uh, the senator? Did the senator in charge of the ag, the Senate Ag Committee? Or, oh sure. I mean, did were y'all doing some similar? Yeah, things? yeah. We got our staffs working together, trying to talk about it. But the Senate version had zero uh, changes to food stamps. Okay. And so, um, and the uh, cotton, which is really important to, to Tom Green County, mm -hmm. had under the fourteen. Meaning the crop cotton, not the crop not, cotton. not senator cotton. No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the crop cotton yeah. um, had been under fourteen farm bill had moved out of Title One, 
Now, this is jargon that, that our farmers will know, but yeah. nevertheless, it was treated differently. Right. So farmer jargon. Farmer jargon. Yeah. Uh, and put under a program that's separate, and it just didn't work. Okay. The stacks program that we put in place, nobody liked it. So one of my missions was to get cotton back under Title I before we got to the Farm Bill because um, the ranking member or the vice chair from uh, Michigan, uh, Debbie Stabenow, um, I knew she would use that issue to leverage other things in the Farm Bill that I want to give her, right? Mm -hmm. And so we were able to get cotton back under Title I mm -hmm. ahead of the Farm Bill negotiations, which was a big deal. 